We are on episode, I don't know, because the room's not here, <laughs> of the Hype Pod. It's definitely episode 100. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, we're like, I think we're in the high 20s. We're definitely high 20s. We're in the now. high 20s. Yes. Uh, and it's been so fantastic. We've been getting incredible feedback from our Hype Pod family, the Hype Network community. Yep. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we never do this, uh, but I'm just going to do a shameless plug because the room's not here and messing everything up. Yeah. Uh, but you need to like, subscribe. We've share. never done that. We've never ever done that. Yeah, um, he hasn't done his job, wow. and it's already been going viral without that. But yes. now, watch, it's gonna ten yeah. x because you're gonna like, subscribe, rate, share, and share uh, this high pod on Amazing. wherever you are listening. Yes, uh, Spotify, YouTube, or actually just go on all the platforms right now. Shameless plug: go to all the platforms and show us some love. Yep, because we're trying to talk to more people like you. Yep, correct. Uh, if you're listening to this, it means that you're all about faith. You're all about yes. innovation. Yep. Uh, maybe you're in the thick of it right now. Maybe you are a Bitcoin holder. Yeah. Maybe you are just sitting Good on the you. riches. Good for you Bitcoin. if you are. You should be tithing. You should be a kingdom builder. Yes. Right. Uh, because you 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 love faith as well. Maybe you're in it. Maybe you're just peeking in. Yeah. Because we speak to a lot of people that don't consider themselves in tech but love the hype pod. Correct. Because they get to learn. They get to and learn. So, or maybe you're an AI and you conflicted theolo like theologically. Right. How does this actually control the future? What's my plans? What's God's plans for AI? That's right. And this is where you're going to learn. This is where your friends are going to learn. Exactly. But it's a special episode today yeah, I'm so in the excited. high 20s because we have Pastor Kira. Pastor Kira. Come on. My wife. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Come on, say hello, babe. I, I'm so excited to be on Hype Pod. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. It's have you be great. ever, can you be honest? Have you ever listened to a Hype Pod? <laughs> <laughs> she she can only be honest, so this is gonna be <laughs> half of one. Hey, <laughs> half of one. It yeah. was that good. Uh, it was so I'm good. So sorry, she guys. turned it off. <laughs> it was that good. She got I started halfway talking. through. The commute finished. <laughs> That's all. There we go. It wasn't the content. Blame the content the commute. was great. That's amazing. So I'm so excited. You've listened to half a hype pod, and now you're a guest <laughs> on uh, on the hype pod. Um, but we're very thrilled because. Arun not being here has left an opportunity for you to be on the pod. Mm, and yes. uh, we're going to lean in to get your perspective on a bunch of things. We never really planned this, honey. I'm just going to tell you. No. Nope. We don't plan this. Okay. Uh, but we just let the conversation roll. Yeah, and, it uh, flows. And I think having a Velvet Hammer's perspective is going to be great. It's needed. It's necessary. Yep. Um, we need your perspective on this pod, Pastor Kira. I want to start with this. Because, uh, unfortunately, I missed this past Sunday. Specifically, my phone was getting blown up because Vive at 5. I know. Oh, I heard yes. was something special. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we talk a lot about technology and innovation, but we cannot be the high pod without the faith component. Yep. Uh, can you share with us what, what happened at Vive at 5? Pastor, I'm giving me a glimpse in our one-on-one -on -one today. But from your perspective, what was so special about it? I think, you know, sometimes it's great to just create atmospheres where mm. you can come into and where your faith can be enlarged. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly what we did on Sunday night. Yeah. We got in a room, we all gathered together, and the atmosphere of faith was electric. Yeah. And we created room for God to move. And yep. so worship was off the charts. Um, you know, my husband, how he provokes our worship team and sort of gives them space to move. They just moved prophetically. It was powerful. Okay, you're talking about different components. And I, I want to break this down because we're going to take a hype pod perspective to this. We have a lot of people that are engineers yep. um, mm -hmm. that might be mechanical software, whatever they might be they think about things pragmatically yeah right. and so when you talk about the presence of god is there a pragmatism to it can you engineer an atmosphere mm. i think you can engineer an atmosphere okay break um, that down well it's a partnership right mm -hmm. it's me bringing what i bring to the table and then god doing the rest mm. so god's always ready he's on the edge of his seat at all times wanting to pour out his spirit wanting to bring revelation he's always speaking god's always speaking and so when we come and we get ourselves in an atmosphere and we present ourselves and we say hey mm -hmm. we're making ourselves available for you to speak to us god i'm leaning in to listen to hear what it is that you have to say then absolutely that's where the magic happens yeah it's like you know creating anything you bring your part to play and then you pray for the other thing yeah. you know to get on it like and we also know what god likes hmm. the bible makes it very clear that god's into faith hmm. wherever faith is that's where god is 
you know, like the centurion had faith. There was different examples that any time faith, we know that faith is the commodity of heaven. So faith grabs the attention of God. So when you're in a room and maybe uh, the word engineering might be a little bit rudimentary, you know, when it comes to uh, an atmosphere, like I'm not necessarily just if I do A, B, and C, then God shows up. Right. But I do know that if I step by faith and I invite God in, as as Kira was saying, if we actually set our hearts toward an appetite for God and we're moving by faith, well, maybe that just grabs the Holy His Spirit's attention. attention. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's not engineering in a formulaic sense, right. uh, but there are components. There are definitely mm-hmm. components that right. go into it. So I hear that one of the, the components. So I, I'd say excellence as well. Okay, talk about that. What do you mean? Well, God loves excellence, right? Mm. Uh, when you do it with your best, that's what excellence is. It doesn't, and I'm not saying that everything has to be professional. Like you have to have a professional band and professional lighting hmm. in order for there to be a move of God. But if you're doing things with excellence, meaning my best, the best I've got, I'm mm. honoring God with my, I'm, pre- I'm prepared as a preacher mm. or I'm prepared as a worship team. We're prepared as a church. We didn't just go, well, what do you want to do? Mm. Let's just do, no, no. It was like, hey, we're prepared a platform. We're offering that to God. Now, God, you move on top of that. Mm. You know what I mean? Let me play devil's advocate. Okay. Um, Because if God is all about maximum glory, how does us being excellent, um, why does he like that? Well, that's our offering. Okay. That's, That's us giving glory to God. We're treating him as glorious by saying, man, we better bring our best. Let's bring our A game because mm. we're not just putting on a show. It's not just like a 18th birthday party. This is this is a worship service. Mm. So let's bring a prepared, rehearsed team. Let's go through a run sheet that we know what's excellent. And let's use that as a framework or an offering for God to now do something on top of. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. That's how he gets glory. I think the way to not glorify God is don't be prepared. Mm. Wow. So I do agree. I mean, I think just even as human beings and we're creating the image of God, right? Uh, We're drawn to excellence. Yes. That's why people have, we can say this because everyone's not here, iPhone versus Android, (laughs) um, because people are just drawn (laughs) uh, to excellence, not subpar. Not subpar. Um, You know, (laughs) and so so excellence is a component. Preparation is a component. Um, What I'm hearing is a pursuit. Yeah. Is is a component. I heard this uh, teaching around revivals. Mm. And they were uh, studying everything from the revivals in the Hebrides in Europe all the way to Azusa, Mm -hmm. right? Different denominations, different style of preaching, different style of worship, uh, different everything ministry approach wise. But one consistent denominator they found in all revivals was this component, hunger. Yeah, appetite. Mm -hmm. Yep. There was an appetite. That seems like another component. Yeah. Yep. And 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 what would you say? Because when you were talking about it earlier, Pastor Adam, in our one on one, you were saying that you guys pursued it until something broke. Yeah. Um, and that could maybe be spiritual language for some people that are just coming to the faith, listening to this. Can you break that down? What did that mean? What What do you mean it broke? Well, I mean, I'd love to hear it from from Kira's perspective because yeah. I was on stage and in many ways uh, helping direct. Okay, let's go in. Let's keep pushing. Let's you know uh, that was the privileged position I had was to either pull it up or push in, mm-hmm. and I felt like we're going to push in. And I felt like it was it was uh, being carried in many ways by the worship team, mm-hmm. but it yet hadn't translated to the congregation. Mm-hmm. But then there was a moment where it just felt like it opened up. Mm-hmm. And it was actually, from my perspective, it was the drum uh, breakdown. We had this, this mm. moment where I it had to literally tell me like, like, like a couple of times I'm telling the worship team, stop singing. I just want drums, just straight drums. No, no instruments, no, no vocals, just drums. Because I just felt... The spirit of God was on Josh, who was a drummer, and uh, and so he was going for it. But the the vocalist was still singing. But I'm like, no, guys, stop! I just want the raw drums. And then when that happened, in my from my perspective, something just switched in the yeah. service. I mean, you were on the floor, you were in the congregation. Yeah, it switched because it was out of the norm. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like you, you're filling songs to a point and there's always, you're, you've got your instruments, you've got your vocals happening all at the same time. But when you strip it back, yeah. there's this vulnerability. There's this like, wow, that's different. It caught my attention. Yep. And that's what dropped us in yes. to like an, a new thing yeah. that God was doing. Yeah. And it was amazing. It, it was just, just like that moment. Compounded from there. Exactly. Hmm. And it shifted something. So then the atmosphere shifted. You know when you feel a shift in an atmosphere? I mean, you, this doesn't even have to be in a 
in a in a church service, you can you can feel a shift in an atmosphere in a board meeting. Yeah, you can mm. feel a shift in an atmosphere in a staff meeting. Mm-hmm. You can feel a resistance, but when you push through into something out of the ordinary, maybe it creates a shift as well. And um, I think what God's looking for in you as the leader, do you have the faith to make the bold shift? Good. Do you are you, you going to take the risk to do right. something out of the ordinary? Yeah. That God rewards. I don't think God's in the formula of a drum breakdown. So now everyone goes does a drum breakdown. You okay. know. But I think God's rewarding the risk mm-hmm. that we took to to do something out of the ordinary mm-hmm. that requires. Okay, this this could come off really bad. Like this could come off really woeful. It mm-hmm. could be terrible, or it could be everything. And I think God's like, oh, I love that. I love that faith. But that's kind of a lot like God. Because yeah. what looks like an ending is actually a beginning yes. with him. And so you could have taken an off ramp at that point because it was kind of wrap up time. Yep. But you were like, no, I'm going to take the on ramp and I'm going to allow God to do something. But you had to pioneer that. You yeah. had to push through and yeah. fight for that. And I think that that's what, uh, you know, if we're going to like kind of break this down into a hype pod format, I think whatever your setting is, are you willing to break through into something unfamiliar? Mm. So good. Are you willing to pioneer a new path? Mm-hmm. Get the attention of heaven. Yeah. I think God's attention gets on your business when you pioneer a new path, mm. on your leadership when you pioneer a new path. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is that you're doing, um, I think that there is a way to grab attention of God. And if you've just got an appetite for God to move, um, it you'll be frustrated with the status quo. Mm-hmm. Th- that's what it is right there. Yeah. Right? Like... It's breaking out of the status quo. Yep. And that's why church can sometimes feel monotonous, maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, everyone's copying someone. Yep. Mm. Right? Like, let's take it even, whether it's in the church, whether it's in business, you know how many networking events you go to to learn the play? You know, it's like, let's hear from an expert on how to do it. Well, they're and looking for the formula. They're looking for the form. Exactly. They're looking for the formula. And you look out in the crowd and you'll have the expert on stage sharing what they've done and everyone taking like A, B, C, D notes, mm-hmm. like, oh, that's what I'm going to do. Rather than taking the the ethos of what they did, they're, they're almost trying to lean into the play. Mm. And, and human nature wants to rerun the play because that's the easiest way to do it. It's proven. Mm. But what their play won't work for you. Right. What you've got to take is the ethos of the risk that they took mm-hmm. or the, the trend buck. Uh, as we say, when you zig, you zag, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like, w- what am I taking from that that is the uh, the willingness to break out and uh, break through? Yeah, I mean, if we transport this to a business setting really quick, um, I felt like I could experience it a little bit uh, recently, actually in an event that, that you all were at with me um, that we were hosting for Overflow, the recent MBA experience yep. that we did. But before we kind of took a bunch of pastors and leaders to a basketball game to just have some fun and fellowship and, and build some connection. Um, we did a presentation. Mm-hmm. We did a presentation in uh, Overflow's newly minted office, uh, which was awesome. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you guys felt this, but um, I actually felt like the atmosphere was really awkward <laughs> at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was presenting and I, I got, I got um, one of our board members, Mackie, who was uh, the creator of the Instagram brand and Bible project and a lot of amazing brands to kind of do his thing. And he was giving great content. Again, it was like still awkward though. It felt like people were warming up. It felt like mm-hmm. people were kind of sizing up and mm. um, it felt like people were just a little bit confused on why they were in the room maybe yeah, uh, and things like that. And I was sensing it and I was, you know, and then uh, I was like, okay, well, let me use this as a brain trust. Let's p- get people to introduce themselves and share. And it kind of warmed it up a little bit, but it was still, mm-hmm. I felt like, something didn't break through. Right. Right. Um, and it was funny because I feel like it started to break through when the LED screens that was supporting me started to break down. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's what I was laughing at. And it's like, it's like, isn't that funny sometimes that you think that, uh, excellence is perfection. Right. No. Uh, but excellence is actually what you were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. It's, did you put your best foot forward? Did you take Mm -hmm. leaps of faith? And in that moment, like, my flesh wanted to cuss out my team. <laughs> um, but by the grace of God and, and by his Holy Spirit, uh, we pushed through yeah. and um, we, we presented what we wanted to present. But I actually got so much more feedback on my response to that. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's a big leader. You're, as a big leader, can I just roll with what's happening and use 
even the tension sometimes, mm. you know, or am I stuck to a script because I'm a one dimensional leader? There you go. A one dimensional leader will have one script. They go in, if that gets altered, it's all falling apart. But you're not running a necessarily a script. You've got an objective, but there's three or four ways you could get to that objective. Mm. And if the plan isn't working, meaning like you got your finger in the air, feeling the temperature in the room and what you had prescribed isn't working, can I pivot and turn it into a Q&A? Mm. Can I get some involvement from some other people? Can I kind of shift this up in the moment, still stay in control, mm. but take a next route to, it's like a GPS reroute, you yeah. know, live in a meeting. Can I yeah. like change this up so that I still get to the destination, but in, in a better way, maybe a more scenic route? Yeah. I mean, exactly. it was it was awesome though. Like to watch it unfold. Okay, to <laughs> it be, on, feel awesome to in be the on the other side, you're like, okay, this is happening. What is he going to do yeah, with yeah. it? You know, and I that, think it was freeing for pastors. It was because, and that's when I felt like it broke open. There. Yeah, right. Yeah, but we could all relate to you. Yeah, because we've all been on the other side of scriptures not going up on time, yeah. or you know, screens not working. Glitching. while we're doing what it is that we do. Right. So you you dropped us into the picture of that, and then you yeah. rose to the occasion, mm. and that was beautiful to watch because life presents us many obstacles. My goodness, and it's like a lot of the time, not you know. Um, uh, you know, sometimes you want to react, but you responded yes. and yeah. you seized the moment and you captured our attention and you brought us through. It was awesome. And preparation helps, right? Yeah. So that breakdown of the screen, because I was prepared, uh, wasn't the silver bullet that would kill me in that moment, yeah. right? Because I knew my stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And, and a lot of times your preparation will allow you to zag while maybe somebody would zig, will yes. allow you to not have to stay to a script. Correct. Will allow you to not have to think so formulaic. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's what we're really talking about. Here's the reality, a key component to entrepreneurship and innovation um, is that you can't be tied to just one script. You can't be. I mean, what makes a great CEO is the pivot. Yep. Your exactly. ability to pivot, your ability to stay on your toes and be able to pivot when need to. And I don't think, I'm not a believer in a culture of pivot because mm. there's a, a culture of pivoting means you're just not planned. Mm. Yeah. So you're always preparing, like, get ready to pivot. That's different from your ability to pivot. Good. Right. Okay, so you have a culture of preparation and an ability to pivot. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And Rather agility. Than, exactly. That's a great word. Agility is a great word. That actually describes it. Uh, do we have an agility to be able to jump hurdles when they come along? Unsuspecting mm. hurdles. Or, or do I need to go back up? Give me a run up. But agility is, can I just, from a standing jump, hit this? Or do I have to get a big run up and, and tackle it? So some people use lack of preparation as an excuse by having a pivot culture. Yeah. Oh, we just pivot. We just ready to roll. No, that just means you're unprepared. What's better is preparing people. Love it. But then being able to pivot when situations happen. So one of the things I love, one of the elements I love about Vibe, our church, is uh, it, it's an organism, it's a people group, it's community, it's all those things. But I view it sometimes through a paradigm of a platform and a product, right? Yeah. Um, and what I love about you both as my pastors is you, you, I believe you're product people. You really care about the details For sure. um, of how we're serving people, our worship experience, what we're talking about excellence and yep. things like that. Mm -hmm. And we've always been prepared. We've always had a plan. You've had strong vision, Pastor Adam, and, and you carrying that out as well, Pastor Kara. How much of um, that preparation and those plans mm -hmm. um, have actually materialized in the last decade? And how much do you think we've had to pivot um, maybe even take, you know, fast forward to the, the most recent times, yeah. right? Like where, where are those pressure points and pivot points that we've had to adapt to? I, w I would say that the overarching plan is still in play. Yeah. I would say the big sure. plan, big P plan is still along the way. There's been many reroutes along the way, which are pivots. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think the destination is still the goal. Mm -hmm. um, how are we getting there and, and what it looks like? Who's on the journey? Yeah. They're mm -hmm. the pivots, mm. yeah. um, you know, but I think the main goal is still the main goal. We're, we're here to plant churches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're here to build the church. Right. That's, that's definitely the goal from the beginning, uh, or at least early in the beginning. Um, how we get there and, and, and why I say that is because you don't know what's going to be unlocked in different seasons. Yeah. Okay, so a company starts, you don't know what, what phase uh, funding will get unlocked. Yep. For a church, for sure. you don't know what phase a building will get unlocked. Yeah. Uh, I know churches sure. that get a building in year three. Mm -hmm. We got a building in year 10. Yep. I know churches got a building in year 20. 
Yep. Like, so you don't know at mm-hmm. what stage that will unlock any, that introduction of something will change a direction. Mm-hmm. But some, some pivots are really good. Some pivots are really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that that's kind of how we've, that's how we do it because I think the plan is still at the forefront. For sure. How, how would you characterize it, Pascal? Yeah, I would say exactly the same thing. The mm-hmm. plan's the same. Same. And that's the thing for a visionary, right? Yeah. A visionary gets to see things twice, once in their mind's eye Ooh. and the second time in reality. Mm. And so that's what we get, the privilege of going like, we know where we're going. We mm-hmm. know where we're taking this church. We know the vision. It's crystal clear in our mind. Mm. But the personnel, that shifts and changes. Yeah. Mm. You know, there's, there's elements to this that, kind of you know life happens Mm -hmm. um you know situations circumstances arise Mm -hmm. covid different things you pivot and you make the vision still come to pass but you got to change the way that you're doing it at Mm. every given moment so there's seasons yeah that was a big unpredictable pivot yeah covid (laughs) huge huge but it didn't really change the big p plan it didn't no and it reminds me of something that our good friend Chiwa said at FlowCon. Somebody asked the question of how has your vision changed uh, since you started Goodwater? And he said he didn't. No. Mm. He right. still uses the same vision deck that he used yes. in year one. Yes. They just made it look prettier That's now. That's called value for money. That is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great, whoever <laughs> built that one uh, keeps paying dividends. But, yeah. you know, it's fancier. It has better branding. Um, maybe a little bit more bells and whistles for how they communicate it, but it's the same. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the same vision. I do think that there is a, a beauty um, to the longevity of a vision. Yeah. Oh right? yeah. Um, yes. I think there is a beauty to those that are willing to stick it out, mm-hmm. building a specific vision. I agree. In in vain of that, in that vein, let me. Can I ask uh, you a question, Kira? Yes. Um, sticking it out because. What you've been pioneering uh, with Vive Girl across mm. the globe, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right now in year 11, we are now seeing a movement of women all across the globe. Oh, yeah. We've got uh, everything from um, you know designers, mm-hmm. uh, CEOs, business women. That's right. We've got like a community of women all across the globe. This year, you're going to do these epic one nights in different countries. Right. Oh, you can do like a cool. night in Frankfurt. You're going to do a night yep. in London. You're going to do a night in... Uh, Milan, beautiful yep, Rome, Ma- Milan in Milan, yep. and uh, we're going to see like all these women. But over this journey of eleven years of building, now what is epic? What has that journey of perseverance been like? And and how have you actually stuck through amidst all the opposition to mm-hmm. women in ministry and all those kinds of <laughs> conversations crazy. that happen? Where's your mindset at? My mindset. To do the will of God, mm. you know, like there's so many off ramps that we can take in life, and I and I, you know, I said this this morning with our staff. It's like there's no grace on f- walking away from the call on your life, wow. but there's every ounce of grace for fulfilling it. Ooh. And so I've just wow. tried to keep myself centered like in the grace of God and the call of God on my life, and that is to build His house. Yeah, is this a facet, an avenue, a way? piece of the pie that I get to build our house? Yes, absolutely. Do I do it in other avenues as well? Yes, I do. But I think that there's so much to be said for women being looked after, being ministered to in the house of God. Man, there's so many women that that Jesus did ministry with. Yes. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. It's like your Lydia's and your Chloe's and your, you know, you're like amazing, your Mary's, like amazing women who did incredible things. But I'm wondering if like, if Vive Girl for, for Vive or women's ministry in another setting is actually the secret source to a potent and powerful church. Because hmm. if you've been, and not many men have, I have the privilege of being at these women's gatherings. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, there ain't no party like a Vive Girl party. Like the, <laughs> the way women are when they get together, That's it's yeah. almost scary. It is. We <laughs> like are it's, forced to be. It's a little bit intimidating because <laughs> Uh, inhibition is thrown to the wind uh, they they really don't care they are all out but they're, and they're in a passionate. safe space they're in a safe space yeah so so that culture that you've created what was the key components to allowing a coach like that to be or how do you build that culture where they have they come in and they're just like wild they're going for it yeah yeah you have to create an a safe space for that and the thing that i know that i can offer that the world cannot offer is worship yep. the word and ministry yep. so those are the three 
distinct things that I just go after at every Vive Girl gathering. Yep. Yep. And so when the girls come in, it's like that camaraderie, that love for God and love for each other is really what I'm just leaning into and magnifying yeah. and empowering to take yeah. place. Because I think as women, we want to be each other's advocates. We don't have to be each other's competition. Right. I think we need each other in our, each other's corner. And, and there seems to be a theme that you keep running through all the gatherings I've been to, which is how do we behave around each other? Yes. Mm. And the conversation of heart surgery. Yes. Yeah, because those are the those are the characteristics. So that's the atmosphere. It's who we are. It's our DNA. It's what draws us together. Mm. Christ calls us together. But then the way that we behave, because I've been in many gatherings. Man, I've been in many rooms, rooms where women are in, and it's not a fun space. Yeah, mm. right. But to, what, what do you mean? What does that mean? Well, it's usually, you know, a little but bit. But it's gossip. Yeah, gossip, bit catty. catty. Yeah. You know, I have to push you down to elevate myself. Right. That is not at all the aroma or the atmosphere of any of our Vibe Girl gatherings. Right. It's It truly is coming alongside and encouraging each other uh, to be live the biggest life that you can live. Hey, you're writing a book. I love that you're writing a book. Do it. You know, yeah. hey, I'm pioneering a company. I'm the CEO over here. Hey, that's amazing. Increase yeah. your sphere of influence in that zone. And how can I help you do that? See, I love that because... Would you agree, and maybe Vance, your perspective on this, I mean, you've, you're have you a father of daughters yeah, uh, as well. And we've got like, it feels like in the last couple of years, there has been an all out assault on women. Mm. Hmm. The definition of what is a woman. Oh, yeah. The rise of oh highlighting transgender and uh, pronouns and all these kinds of things. Yeah. It either makes women want to rise up or shrink back mm. and... How have you specifically led women to be truly their identity in Christ as women and be bold through all the all out assault, it feels like, on women from Satan? Mm. Yeah, you know, that, but that's the challenge. And women, women, I think, are the best at rising in occasions um, where there's uh, tension or where there's circumstances that need, you know, somebody to rise up. In right. the absence of a man, a woman will rise up. Right. Yep. You yep. look at Deborah in the Bible. Mm. It was like, and then Deborah arose. Right. You know, so I think it's in our DNA as yeah. women to to rise up in uh, in these moments. And, you know, we have things to say. We have things to contribute. We have giftings. We have anointings yeah. that God wants to use. So no doubt. I'm just leaning into calling them what they are, women yep. of God, yep. and you know, empowering them to do what it is that God has called them to do. Oh, I like that. There's so many things. Yeah. It's beautiful. I like that sentence. We have giftings. Mm -hmm. We have talents. Mm -hmm. I think that that's literally what uh, is the beauty, beautiful makeup of whether it's a church yeah. or a business, a company, a product is let's move away from DEI. Come on. Let's move away from just having women just to even the mix. But could we include women because of the unique mix that they bring? Mm -hmm. Wow. Not just to have a mix. Yeah. Right, right, right. I, I think it's a huge insult. It's a huge, it's, it's got to be a huge insult, insult to it's, be invited to the room just because we need a woman in the room. Yes, it's a huge insult. I want right. to be in the room because I'm the right person in Come the room. Come on now. Because I'm the most skilled person to Come be on. in the room. Yes. Because I have what it takes to fulfill whatever it is. Like right. I have that piece of the puzzle that you need. Right. But I don't want to be in the room just because. What an because empty win. Mm -hmm. to get yeah. in the room it just feels, because yeah yeah you're cheated but it's like there is a, there is a way to have a a mix of male female because of the unique aspect and mm -hmm. mindset and giftings and under, understanding mm -hmm. but that's what dei miss dei movement and push was all about just having a mix just token put people in just to make it it's look and it's superficial but yeah. what about at the core of it about having somebody with some real brilliant perspective right. that maybe Maybe as men, we're missing. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I love the word uniqueness. Even in the premise of you constructing the type of ministry that you're going to build, you started from the question of what can the world not offer? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what I'm going to offer. That's yeah. so good. And if you're building a company, um, I really feel like that's a mission critical question for you to ask um, mm -hmm. so that you're just not another lesser version of something that's already out there. Right. right. You have to come from the component of what is not out there that I uniquely am created Mm. That I have, uh, you know, what we talk about at Overflow all the time is um, you don't want to be the best. You want to be the only. 
Mm. Right. 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 I'm the only choice. Like Overflow is the only choice. I like I'm, not like, I'm not trying to compare myself to anybody because this is the choice yeah. for if you want to do X, Y, Z. Oh, that's such a boss and we move. really we, we really carved out, right, uh, this area where we feel like we will be, we are the best of the world at. Um, and Did you I'm, just create a new category? You got best in class. You're going for only in class. <laughs> <laughs> only in class, right? Because yeah. yeah, re- that's the reality, right? If we're really... Um, believing that there is a true uniqueness, a true genius yeah. uh, to each person. A lot of it is mm. uh, us discovering what that is. Yeah. And, and so even when I was going on the early days of my entrepreneurial journey, um, I really had to clarify a lot of my intent, right? And, and Kim was a big help in that, um, making sure it was clarified away from just the money motivation, Yeah. right, mm. for example. And I know that might sound cliche or basic, but uh, I think it's something that everybody has to confront and root out the element is in us well right? i mean if you don't you'll lower class to make money right but if if to be the best you'll spend money to be the best exactly mm-hmm. and and when i clarify that okay cool my motivation is and my motive is not going to just be for uh money um mm-hmm. but it's going to be for a mission yeah uh, it allowed me to then go on the journey and it was a fun journey of understanding what what has God created me to do yeah. in this world? And I was uniquely positioned in a place where I was like, oh, wow, I have all this great insight for being executive pastor at Vive Church. I have all this great insight for being part of the ground level team at Vive Church to see a progression of a church plant all the way to where we're at today to be part of even buying buildings yep. right now yep. and things like that. How can I leverage that experience where I also was at Google yep. and um, learned a lot about tech? How can I marry those worlds together? together. I feel like... I'm probably in a handful of people that could do something exactly like that. And I don't, Cause I, you've had a front row seat. Yeah. And right. I say that with all humility and, and you're probably listening to this and that's a good journey to go on. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's like, what are you, you guys told me this uh, really early on is you have been under uh, some great leaders and you've also been under some leaders that you yep. didn't really agree yep. with a lot of the way that they led, but you counted that as a blessing too. Of course. Yep. Cause you would tell me, that clarified what you didn't want to do. Of course, yes. of course. Yeah, a thousand percent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's vital to your growing, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's um, how do you get a picture of parenting? You get it both from things your parents did well and things you go, oh, I don't ever, I don't ever do that. Because you're, you, there's a point in your life where you realize, oh, my parents are human, mm-hmm. right? Because they make mistakes too. Up until a certain age, you just think your, your parents are God, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they know everything. And then you realize, oh, they make mistakes too. And that's why it's a good thing for parents to be able to apologize sometimes when they make a mistake, wow. to right. teach their kids, hey, we're human too, but learn from us all the stuff that you want to build in. And even the stuff, our mistakes learn from that as well. Wow. And that's going to shape great next generation parents, right? Same mm-hmm. with business, leadership, all these things you get to, uh, uh, what we, we call, we used to use this, this term, eat the fish, spit out the bones. Yeah. So we're going to you don't consume all of it. There's some bones that you got to pick out of the leadership that you're like, no, nah, that's not digestible. I'm not going to digest that. I'm going to eat the, I'm going to eat the meat and uh, leave the rest. I, you know, I'd be remiss uh, if I didn't go into this topic while having Pastor Kira on the podcast. Oh, here we go. Uh, Cause we were talking about parenting. Mm. Right. And I often joke with people that I'm actually running five startups right now. One is Overflow <laughs> and then one is Lennox, Emerson, yes. Tatum yes. and Wesley. Uh, and uh, those are my most treasured uh, startups yep. uh, that I get to be a part of. And Pastor Kira, you're probably one of the greatest mothers uh, that we get to be in relationship with. And we learn so much from you. Um, and I've just been the last maybe two years specifically um, so blessed and impacted by just how Medea, Zali, Zara are just thriving. Yeah. Mm. Thriving. Talking about like ingredients and components and elements, what have been important ingredients on the journey of, you know, being an amazing mother to these amazing children that has allowed them to just really thrive in the season? Mm. I, I'm going to give you one. Yeah. Because I think, it, and I will say that it's consistency mm. in me. And so what we don't consider a lot of the time is that when we become a parent, we're still growing up too. And so our kids get a front row seat to us not knowing everything, but trying out everything and going on that journey. So, you know, once you get a little older, you start to realize, oh my gosh, my parents were learning while I was learning. And there was this like thing taking place. So it's now in the latter years that my children will tell me, mommy, I just want to be like you. Mm -hmm. I love the way that you lead people. I love the way that you prepare for a Sunday service, Mm -hmm. the way that you prepare for preaching. They see what happens behind 
behind the scenes and then they see what happens from the platform and they don't see any inconsistency. Wow. So I think that's been like the greatest ingredient to my life and, and being, you know, being able to say, hey, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Hey, you know, I'm going to be better. I'm growing too. Those kinds of things, I think in a company setting uh, with your boss hat on, but also with your children, it's like that, that wins a lot of emotional equity with that's people yeah. to know that you're the real deal. Okay, you both brought up this I caught um, in talking about parenting, apologizing mm -hmm. to your children. I want to. Well, actually... I've never done anything wrong, so <laughs> if I do, I'll apologize. <laughs> well, I, I want to. Perfect in I want to bring this too. principle. Yeah, I want to bring this principle actually in a leadership context. Um, I totally get it in a parenting context. That's powerful. Yeah. Uh, but but do we do that in a leadership context context as well? Um, is it different? Is it the same? Um, how do you contextualize that? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Sure. I'm, just, I'm, <laughs> you, I'm very you, you different to him. Yeah. I do. I fall okay. on my sword all the time. Okay. I will. I will there's, take it for my team. Because there's been times where Kira's like, "Let's just apologize for hiring that person to everybody." I was like, "No, that wasn't my bad. Like, that, <laughs> that was that, their bad." That, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I believed in them, and they didn't make and it. I'm you know like, what I mean? I like, subjected them to everybody else. You know, right. so I have this sense of ownership. Right. Yeah, I think it, we definitely have a a different uh, response to those same situations. Okay. Um, Kira is definitely quick to apologize and yeah. quick to take ownership and quick yeah. to be like, look, that's my bad. I, I kind of uh, know that the risk in trusting people comes with the risk of them not being trustworthy. Mm. Yes, and so uh, I'm not going to apologize for trusting and risking. Mm. Um, that was on them. Mm. So, so, but, but if there is a mistake that is clearly me, I've got no problem with saying, hey guys, I own this one. Okay. Um, yes. I, th I think there's ownership, extreme ownership is owning the wins and owning the losses. There you go. Right. And that's where the position go. that I'm in if we don't get a win, I'm going to own that in the sense of not going to the team and going, apologize. I'm so sorry. I failed you as a leader. That's not, that's not leadership. No. Ownership through saying, hey, look, I admit we could, probably could have been better prepared. I admit I probably could have led us better. Mm -hmm. Instead of shifting the blame on everybody, like, hey, you should have performed better. You should have turned up on time. You should have. No, no. I'm just going to wear it and go, hey, I should have, I should have called us higher. Mm -hmm. I should have had more expectations on us. You know what I mean? And so I'm in taking fact, the ownership. In fact, this when you do that, when you kick into that mechanism and that mode, it actually invites humility yes. amongst everybody else. And there then everybody else offers up their part that they could have done. Better. Yeah, they, they chime in a bit. You know what? I, I, I own this and I could have done that. And now we're like, okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you I, could have. I think actually. a part of me um, feels a lot of permission to hold other people accountable when I know I'm holding myself yes. to the highest accountability. Sure. Right. Right. And, um, and and when I model that, um, I feel a greater permission Yes, uh, to not like go in on people, but to hold them to the same standard that I feel like I'm holding myself to at an even greater True. level. And you can, if you are holding yourself to that high standard, you have no problem holding people to that there standard. You go. Mm -hmm. But if you know that you're not, then you, you really feel fake. Yeah. Oh, fault. for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's kind of like ministering from places where you haven't gotten victory. Exactly. <laughs> and you, yeah. can, you can always smell that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it feels wounded still. It feels right. really sensitive. You know, it doesn't feel strong. It hasn't felt like it's healed. Um, that's why I think people, even in ministry, they, they jump to make a testimony out of something that's not dealt with yet. Ooh. And it comes off really awkward. It doesn't come off like freeing. It feels like they need now prayer. Yeah. And it's uh, true. And we've got to be really quick to heal through a season before we become an expert on it mm -hmm. and before we teach on it. Mm -hmm. I think in what we're seeing with the rise of influences is everyone's trying to use their situation to to teach or grift off their situation when the reality is you you got to go through it yet. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of public therapy going on yes. when therapy is meant to be private. Yes. How do you all approach that? Um you know, because I think a lot of it in our preparation and our pursuit of excellence, what hijacks that sometimes is our mental, mm. right? It's not healthy. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously prayer is a big component of both of your lives. Um, but break that down more. Is it is it really all in prayer where you get your counsel individually or, you know, what are some tools? Mm. Kira, you want to go? I go to God first. Yeah. And I, you know, that's my first point of call. But then I also have great pastors. Good. And my pastors are amazing and they give me the best counsel. Literally, there's no counsel they've given me that I haven't applied and it mm. hasn't worked. So you do need to have great counsel, but I take everything up. 
I don't. I rarely will take things sideways, okay. like m- sideways to my husband. Of course, he knows everything, but you don't n- generally need to tell your whole friend group okay. or bleed it That's out helpful. to those who follow you. That's helpful. You know, you you gotta understand that you're a bit of a protective layer too, from wow. like, you know, as a head or a CEO or you know whatever it is that you're leading as a leader. I understand that I'm meant to be a little bit of an umbrella of protection from the storms of life and from financial press pressures and from certain things so i'm trying to absorb as much as i can and not bleed Mm. that out onto everybody else underneath me Mm. um and so that's why you have to have those good avenues and and know exactly where are those pockets that you go to for that counsel and i want good counsel i want counsel from someone who's been there done that i'm not looking for counsel from someone who has no idea and they haven't journeyed the road that i'm about to journey so the practical practical people on the pod are i can hear them they're they're asking how do you how do you do that practically with your pastor are you is it voice memos back and forth is it text message is it a weekly call is it a quarterly in-person meetup how do you do it and how do you find it be effective i do i do it very relationally i'm not the kind of person who just takes withdrawals from people there you go because then you Good. just feel like, oh, I'm just, the, I'm that person in Good. their world. So I make investments. I make phone calls. I reach out. I pursue my leaders. Beautiful. Um, I'm always trying to get in in my pastor's worlds. Um, and so, you know, it can be as frequent as you need it to be. Good. You know. Um, it's like seasonal probably. Seasonal. But yeah, I'm not on there all every week. Right. It's like, you know, maybe once a month I'm reaching out. Good. I'm checking in and I get the same kind of response back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think for me, uh I I will intentionally bottle some things up to have a a conversation with my pastor. Oh, interesting. Um where I will filter out is this is this a level of conversation that I need his his input in. Wow. And I know that because I'm approaching him to disciple me. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I know that discipleship is discipline. Mm-hmm. Wow. The, the two words are so uniquely yeah. similar. They're almost the same word, disciple and discipline. That's right. And Hebrews definitely talks about the fact that God disciplines those he loves. If you're not disciplined, you're an illegitimate son, Ooh. right? So when you think about it, I have the reason I bottle it up is because I'm preparing myself to be disciplined. Mm. I'm not going, can you coddle me? Mm. Can you tell me it's going to be okay? I go to actually, I actually get that in my prayer time with God. Like God reminds me he's with me, but he allow, I allow God to use my pastor to actually correct me. Wow. So I'll bring a situa- situation, I say, and I'll invite, hey, how can I do this better? Wow. What am I missing? Wow. What would you do in this situation? And I'm not looking for him to say, oh yeah, they're really mean, they're bad. No, no, I'm looking for him to go, hey, you probably could have handled that better. Mm-hmm. I'm. And that's why I bottle up because I'm preparing myself to receive discipline. See that language bottle up, put, pull on that thought a little bit more because I think that would probably trigger some people. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm not just every single thing I've got, I'm just on the phone and there you go. and saturating them. I'm actually storing it up till I've got a, a robust conversation. And if it's sat there for a week or two and it's still an important thing for me to talk about, well, most yeah, you, things will solve themselves. You, you yes, marinate on true. stuff. I marinate. Yeah. Because I don't want to just be uh, flighty and emotional. Mm. And flighty emotional is actually going to be the sure way to not have my pastor answer my calls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> plus, Do you know what I mean? <laughs> plus, you live in that zone, so you're placing a guard yes. over his time exactly. because you honor him. Because I have people do that to me, mm-hmm. and I know when somebody's actually mm-hmm. processed something and they're bringing something of importance, not just I'm their first call. Right? No, have or you taken this? You're to their tenth because that's the worst. Yeah, that's even worse. That's even worse. Yeah, like you already you, spoke you to everybody it. else. Exactly. I like, I like the marination strategy. Um, I, I have this kind of axiom in my life that time is the best truth teller. Yep. And sometimes in the short term, in your immediate view, it seems crazy, mm-hmm. right? But if you actually just open up the aperture yeah. and let time mm-hmm. <laughs> right, yeah. just go by, you start seeing, like you said, actually, Sometimes it does work itself out. Yeah, it does. And it Most actually times. is not even a point of conversation right. anymore. And sometimes if it does last time, okay, cool. Maybe it is a persistent thing that needs to be brought up. Yeah. Right? And that's why I say bottle it up because I want to put a lid on it. I want to hold it. I don't want it to affect every area of my life. I want to put it in a compartment and I want it to be able to be controllable where it's not like now my whole world's falling apart. But as I grow and as I learn maybe over a few days or even a few weeks, and if it's still, when I open that up, it's still really sore and raw. 
okay, now I can talk to my pastor. And that's why I asked about the bottle up language specifically, because I think what people would think sometimes, I talk to uh, some men about this, is is they feel like that posture um, is uncontrollable. Okay. Like yep. that bottle up can lead to a, a busting open. <laughs> well, it can if you never, ever open it in the right space. Good. So you've got to be able to have a storage mode that there's the right outlet to talk about it in health. Mm. If you never have that outlet and you just keep trying to jam things in that bottle and it's like, that's your, that's your, that's your solution is just to only bottle it up. Mm -hmm. Well, it is going to explode at some point Mm -hmm. because it has a certain capacity. You have a certain capacity, but if you're storing it to appropriate it and have a conversation, that's a different way to open the bottle. Yeah. I feel like you both are good studiers of your leaders as well. It's something that uh, I try to learn from as well. Like I won't send, Pastor Adam, uh, a voice memo because I know he hates him. Hate him. Yeah. Um, and so, although they text, they they translate into text now. I know. Okay, so you like him? Well, I never listen to the voice message. <laughs> I read the text. <laughs> but it's just a one silly example of like you know, if you do want mentorship, if you do uh, want to uh, glean and receive from your pastor, um, you know, help them help you. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Study your leader. Um, and understand the cadence and understand the communication pathway and you'll get so much more. Uh, yep. You'll get so much more. I, l- I love your tactic as well. Like your immediate response, Pesquero, was like, so what I do is I invest. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think yeah. that like we're always looking like, how do I extract more? It's like, right. actually, yep. why, why don't you just think about how do you exactly. invest more? Yep. Exactly. You know, and then you'll maybe receive some dividends. Yep. You'll receive uh, dividends. That you're looking for. Yeah, relational equity is everything. Mm-hmm. Um, there, is, there is, it depends. But you can't put a price on, on relationship. And what is it? What kind of investment are you prepared to make to get that relational equity? True. And equity is really the best way to define equity. It's what you can draw on. Mm. Yeah. What you have available to draw on. Yeah. And so if you make investment, 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 then you'll have enough equity to draw on when you need it. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say right now, bold statement. This was the greatest podcast <laughs> we have ever recorded <laughs> so on good. the Hype Pod. Because of the Velvet uh, Hammer. Man, I can't wait to share this when this is published with yes. our Vive community, with the Hype community, um, with everybody that listens to this podcast. What do we got coming up in the Hype community? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so today, actually, uh, as we were going to our one-on-one, we were just hopping off uh uh, uh, ask me anything with yes. Charles Shannon, and a, yes. a venture capitalist Come within on, he's awesome. our community. Oh, he's so good. He's so smart. We're doing more of these events, right? Yep. Ask me anything. Yep. Uh, we have some network nights. Is it too early cooking? to talk about Amen? Never too early because Amen's coming to talk about Amen. Talk about you told me the other day. I didn't even fully catch up to this. You have over thirty sessions we've got planned. Thirty the different art of? art of sessions. What does and, that mean? I mean, we've got we've got sessions on sessions. We've got specified sessions. The hardest thing you're going to have to contemplate at Amen Experience this year is which, which session, session do I go to? Because there's <laughs> going to be multiple sessions you want to be at, but they're all going to be at the same time. Well, at least three of them are going to be at the same time. Brilliant. Um, I've got I've got a really great session. I'm excited about. We've got this chef from London, MJ killer he he's got this session he's gonna do the art of fire he cooks with fire but it's not just about cooking with flame the way he he unpacks the artistry behind cooking and i mean i i said bro you, you're gonna to have to bring you're gonna to have to be prepared to feed everybody in the room mm. yeah because there ain't no way we're gonna be able to listen to that and not salivate and just want to you know just kill something you know so that's <laughs> gonna be great and then uh we've got my friend jason from modus operandi coming yeah. all the way from napa valley Those he's gonna do the so out of wine he's he got a hundred point wine. yes he's got a hundred point wine now like point. he is at the top of his craft as a boutique winemaker and just really breaking down he's going to break down his journey of faith what it is to grow wine make wine and really just uh, just really integrate that with building business and- last time we were up there we prayed for him we did sure. pray for him we're, exactly we, we were and he got baptized recently oh my god so he's just got God's moving in his life. Um, incredible. But I mean, we've got industry, all kinds of different industry, film, uh, you know, innovation, tech. We've got a, a personal finance and investment yes. with Chiwa. Oh, my goodness. Like, oh I mean, I said, now. let's break you out of like company mode. What about personal? How do we how do we facilitate our personal finances and how do we make personal investments? That's going to be wild. If you are not signed up for Amen. Yeah. Uh, just even for that right there. Yep. Um, silly, silly decision. Get signed up right now. Yep. June 26th to 28th yeah. in the Silicon Valley. Best summary life. Yeah, just Google. A- amen. 
conference. Um, it's going to be amazing. Yep. How, so we have the hype community listening to this and, you know, we have people from the hype community coming from Brazil, from Miami, yep. from actually Diego, part of the hype community was just here. Today. Yes. Just I saw him through, today. Uh, just cause he loves this space so much. And he was part of amen last year. The art of is a bit different. Yep. Um, and we're just blowing it up with so many sessions. How is hype specifically going to be integrated? We've got a hype house again. We're running that back. Yeah. Uh, in the hype house is, you know, opportunity for co-working. Okay. Uh, so you don't even have to take time off. You can just work remote, work from the hype house, do lunch and learns, be in sessions, network with other, uh, you know, innovators, people in tech, industry, that kind of stuff, be around the atmosphere of the church and faith. And, uh, you know, it's it was so brilliant. Last year, we had sponsors coming in. We had uh, different retreats. I think mm -hmm. they had like boba stuff mm -hmm. and, and all yeah. these really cool stuff. So it's just a great environment to do your work from. Yeah. Um, on top of that, there's going to be just industry-specific sessions cool. that uh, you'll be, get to be a part of. You get to grow in your faith, and then you'll be poised and ready for the amen experiences at night yeah which are going to be off the charts yeah. releasing a new album Let's uh go. you know just we're going to have we're maxing out uh we're closing registrations at 2000 people we're going to get there really soon and um you know if we do if we do go to 3000 people we'll probably open up another venue cool um but at the moment the plan is here in mountain view we'll max out at 2000 well the hype house is outdoors yep. um in this beautiful uh, structure that we custom build for the conference and yep. it's in the parking lot of vibe church and it's the first business event i've ever been to that has tailgaters we yeah. tailgaters <laughs> That's uh, true. last year that just popped their cyber truck uh, yeah tailgate. that'd be great and, if we had a little cyber know? truck tailgating at the hype house tesla gonna sponsor this one too so it's, i love it come through yeah I love it. So sign up for Amen Conference. Uh, go to hypenetwork.org or hypemembership.com to learn more about how you can go. And membership's deeper. open too right now. We're taking so, applicants. So we're taking applicants and you got to do it this month before it goes to $1,000. So it's still 500. Yep. Um, Limited time. Which is just silly. We overpriced it that way because uh, everybody keeps telling us it's way too cheap. And I'm like, ah, like I love that and I hate that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so uh, all these funds just go back into reinvesting into making this experience even better. So yep. you want to make sure to uh, check that out. Hypemembership.com. We love you. Yep. Hype Pod family. And we'll yes. see you next time. Bye. Bye.